I'm Gleaves Whitney. I'm director of the Hallenstein Center for Presidential Studies at Grand Valley State University. And I'm just thrilled that this day has come to pass. About a year ago, I was in on a, serendipitously, on a wonderful conversation between President Tom Haas and Ralph Hallenstein. And as I was watching Tom's wheels turn, I could see that Tom wanted to find a way that this university could recognize Ralph for a lifetime of leadership and service. Great achievement. And so Tom turned to me at one point and he said, you know what, let's have the Ralph W. Hallenstein, the Colonel Ralph W. Hallenstein Leadership Award and we'll have a, a fellowship that will be created in Ralph's name. Well, I was thrilled with that, uh, that wonderful idea. And here we are a year later, Tom's going to talk about it at greater length in just a few minutes. It's my happy job right now to tell you just a little bit about who Ralph Hallenstein is. He was originally born in Fort Wayne, Indiana, came to Grand Rapids at the age of 12. He's been in Grand Rapids ever since. If you look at his background and all the things he's done and all the ways he's led, it's really impressive. He headed up, for example, in the early to mid-1930s, a Civilian Conservation Corps camp north of here of African Americans. And he was a pioneer for civil rights, even in those days, because he made sure that they had services and opportunities that were not available ordinarily to African Americans at that time in our history. Ralph came back to, the, to Grand Rapids. He was city editor of the Grand Rapids Herald here in town. He sat at the very desk that Arthur Vandenberg sat at. So he uh, distinguished himself as a journalist and as a city editor. Then when he knew that there were storm clouds gathering over Europe, as Churchill famously put it, Ralph went back into the, the army and he served first in Iceland. This is before Pearl Harbor. Not many Americans know that story, that a number of US servicemen, Ralph among them, were in Iceland actually before Pearl Harbor. And he, he rose fast because he started to distinguish himself in intelligence, in intelligence gathering. And he has some amazing stories that you can read about at this time in his life. If you go to his book, Intelligence Was My Line. And then Ralph finds himself going to London and serving on General Eisenhower's staff right before D-Day. And Ralph's in on the planning of D-Day as a, as a colonel, the youngest colonel on Eisenhower's staff. Ralph then has a remarkable story as he goes into the war-torn continent. He's one of the first American officers into liberated Paris. First American officer into Dachau concentration camp. He goes through Germany. He's on the trail of Hitler, as a matter of fact. I mean, you can't even make a good movie to describe all the things that he's done. <laughs> but after the war, Ralph saw an opportunity in international business, and he became a very distinguished uh, international businessman in international trade. And if you've ever had Andy's mints and goldfish crackers and windmill cookies, you know the flavor of Ralph's work. Uh, he uh, promoted all those, he developed those products. But it doesn't just end there. The, you see the remarkable thing about Ralph's life is that he continued to find interesting, vital areas where he could exercise leadership. He became very active, not only in business, but in his church. He founded an organization called Sarah International. He was an observer at the Second Vatican Council. After his, his work there and coming back to he became really a, uh, one of West Michigan's great donors. He gave, and he gave, and he gave, and he keeps giving. Ralph Hallenstein has, uh, his name is on a number of buildings around this community. If you've been at Aquinas College and seen the, the Grace Hallenstein Library, for example, in honor of his wife. Uh, if you've been at St. Mary's, you see the Hallenstein Center over there, the Neurological Center. And of course, we're so proud at Grand Valley to have the Hallenstein Center for Presidential Studies here at Grand Valley. So now you have a, an indication of all of the things that Ralph Hallenstein has done, and it's why it clicked in, in Tom Haas's head that it would be suitable for this university to honor this individual who has given so much to us, and we in turn at the Hallenstein Center try to instill that sense of ethical, effective leadership in our young people and inspire them to a life of leadership and service as Ralph has inspired us. 
But to tell you more about the medal and the recipient of this year's medal, another great man, I'd like to introduce the fourth distinguished president of Grand Valley State University, Tom Haas. Thank you, Cleves. Uh, in the service, uh, we have, of course, acronyms and we have short, shorthand, and a colonel is an 06. And I'm a retired captain in the Coast Guard, which is another 06. So with this, Colonel, I salute you, sir. From 106 to, the, to another. I couldn't be happier to be president of Grand Valley State University during our 50 year service to this great community of Grand Rapids, West Michigan, and the rest of the state. And I couldn't be more proud than to recognize uh, individuals who have made such a significant difference in our world. Ralph and also President Ford. And uh, a, a, story, a history or movie theater or movie presentation of uh, Colonel Helen Stein. I think there would be only one actor who could do that. It's a colonel himself. <laughs> I think that, that would be the case, wouldn't it? Well, during my uh, almost five years now of service here at Grand Valley State University, one of the highlights for me has been to get to know uh, Colonel Ralph Hallenstein. He's an extraordinary youthful individual of 99 years of age. And I know that year in and year out, Ralph has proven to be a great personal colleague as well as a loyal friend to this university. I admire Ralph as an individual who is ethical, an effective leader, and in numerous endeavors demonstrated these traits in journalism, the military, international business, the church, and philanthropy. All of our lives have been enriched by his example. He exemplifies, in my mind, the notion of life of service and the life of leadership that Grand Valley seeks to instill in its graduates. And to have the young people here from the middle school, too, that's part of our role to shape our students and our societies. And with them here, it really is a great example of Grand Valley achieving its mission. And over the years, as Gleaves pointed out, they've learned more and more about Ralph's achievements and all the ways that he has served our nation. I, one thought that we had, our university needs to do justice to this remarkable individual. And in anticipation of our 50th anniversary last year, I thought the timing was just right for this most prestigious fellowship, the Colonel Ralph W. Hollenstein Fellowship, and our friend's good name. The aim of this fellowship is to honor distinguished individuals whose leadership and public service have brought about policies that have profoundly influenced the course of our nation and of our world. And today, I am pleased to announce the first recipient of the Colonel Ralph W. Hallenstein Fellowship. It goes to a man who was Ralph's friend since high school, President Gerald R. Ford. President Ford exemplifies the leadership and public service that inspires us at Grand Valley State University. His, life, his life's work influenced our nation and the world for the better. He served with distinction in the Navy during World War II. He served in the U.S. House of Representatives from 1949 to 1973, rising to the House Minority Leader. In 1973, he was nominated by President Nixon and approved by the Senate to be Vice President of the United States, the first under the terms of the 25th Amendment. Then, when President Nixon resigned in 1974, Gerald Ford became the 38th President of the United States, another first under the terms of the 25th Amendment. His character and work were valuable to healing the nation and restoring trust in the office of the presidency and the government. In fact, in 1974, when I was a newly minted ensign, he was my commander in chief. <laughs> he also had the virtue that leaders need to get anything done, and that is courage. 
He received the John F. Kennedy Foundation Profile and Courage Award for the difficult decision of pardoning Richard Nixon. President Ford also helped lay the groundwork for the end of the Cold War by being a strong voice leading up to the Helsinki Awards. Following his years as president, President Ford continued to serve our nation as that elder statesman, offering valuable counsel to younger presidents and commentary to the public on a host of important issues facing our nation. And in fact, Marsha and I met, met the president in 1982 when he came to the Coast Guard Academy in New London, Connecticut. The reason being because Marsha was from Michigan, we had to find someone who could have dinner with him. <laughs> But that was a joy to be in his presence and to, again, understand the nature of character. And that was our mission at the Coast Guard Academy as it continues to be here at Grand Valley State University, developing and shaping character. Throughout all his years in public service, President Ford was known for his integrity and his courage. He is the fitting first recipient for an award in Ralph's Hallenstein's name, and we couldn't be more honored. Here to receive the first Colonel Ralph W. Hallenstein Fellowship on his father's behalf is Steve Ford, the chairman of Gerald R. Ford Foundation. Steve, could you come up and join me, please? Ralph as well. They, uh, they gave me a couple minutes to, uh, first of all, I'm humbled. I'm humbled to represent the family. And Colonel, um, I can tell you a message from my mom and the rest of the kids. It is an honor, an extreme honor for dad's name to be connected with you. Um, the integrity, the leadership, uh, the qualities of your life, how you live it out, the fabric of your life is everything dads strive for. And two of you are from that, that same generation, and it's a great generation. It's probably the best generation, and we have so much to learn from you guys. And I, I tell the young people out here that from the Gerald Ford Middle School, don't miss a chance today to learn a great lesson. And inspect, think about how this man here and my father, former President of the United States, how they became men of character, how they became men of integrity and leadership. And it wasn't done overnight. Um, tonight, or this afternoon, we're doing a, uh, a series at the museum and library, and it's on ethics. And it's on what is ethics, and what is unethical behavior, and ethical behavior. And when you think about my dad and his life as a, as a leader, President of the United States, it didn't start that, that the day he was sworn into office as president wasn't the day that he developed character or ethics, the ability to lead. It was those seeds were planted long ago at your age, seventh, eighth graders, thinking about what you want to look like 10, 20 years from now. And you, you can't, whatever seeds you put into the ground today, are what you're gonna find later. I, I was an ag major in college, <clears throat> and I had a professor, and I remember him telling me, you can't stick broccoli in the ground and expect to see carrots. It's not gonna happen. And the same thing happens with us as individuals. The seeds you put in today, as a young person, as an adult, are what you're gonna harvest later. And my dad and the colonel, the wonderful thing about them is they had people that invested in their lives at your age. When they were in seventh, eighth grade, high school, 
They made sure that they placed themselves around people who had integrity, character, leadership, and, and they learned from those people. And those people invested in their lives. And I, I look back today, and the reason Dad had that character, that integrity, is because of the people of Grand Rapids, his mother, his father, his church pastor, his Boy Scout leader, his football coach, all those people invested in my dad's life and prepared him for this, this very unique moment when Richard Nixon had to step down from office. And uh, I'll never forget the day. We, we stood there on the south lawn of the White House. Nixon's helicopter was taken off. Uh, I think everybody remembers the, the, the view of Richard Nixon saying goodbye to his staff, family, and friends on the south lawn of the White House. I, I was standing there with Dad, and it was a constitutional crisis. You had a man, Jerry Ford, who had been a congressman from Grand Rapids, Michigan for 25 years, was now going to become the president of the United States. First man to take that leadership, to be president, without going through a general election. Never happened before in the history of this country. But because as a young person in Grand Rapids, at South High, playing football, as Boy Scout, all those people had prepared him, planted the seeds for him to have the character, the integrity, and the ability to, to lead that day. So uh, we stand here today, uh, our family, I'm the one representing mom, and she loves you. She's so proud, dad's name is next to yours. Um, I think I can sum the whole thing up. There's a statue that will be going um, in the United States Capitol soon. The statue of my father. He'll be the last president put in the rotunda. One of his great friends in Congress uh, was not a Republican. It was the Democrat, uh, Tip O'Neill, who was the Speaker of the House. And I think I can best sum up who Dad was, the fabric of his life. Tip O'Neill, and I, I, I'm loosely quoting here, but it's very close, said, God has been very good to America. During the Civil War, he sent Abraham Lincoln. And during Watergate, he sent Gerald Ford, the right man at the right time, to heal a nation. I, I stand here proudly. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. We're proud to stand next to you and be the first recipient of this prestigious award. Thank you. I wish I could talk like that. <laughs> but thank you, Steve. Your father was a wonderful man, a truly, truly great man. I cannot help but be more than pleased that this first award is being given to Jerry Ford, an individual whose contributions to his country and to his fellow men are of the highest honor and order. President Ford, by every measure, meets the highest requirements of this fellowship. And fortunately, he brings with him the gratitude of numerous friends in this community. For my part, I remember Jerry very well. Uh, I carry with me a um, mentally bruised arm, as a matter of fact. I played football against Jerry 81 years ago. <laughs> Biggest mistake I ever made. <laughs> But he was, I couldn't even help but in those days, of course, he came to be an All-American practically. And, uh, and uh, this was in high school when I was in Central and he was in South. And uh, even then, he was an All-State star. And he's always had great athletic abilities and character. I think that put him in pretty good stead in the, in the years to come. And so today that we all pay tribute and honor to just Jerry, this great man and his friendship and the leadership that he gave to our country. In closing, however, I want to say that I, we have to give great thanks to the president of Grand Valley, Tom Haas. He's done a magnificent job and has made a great thing out of the university. And as the presidential center is conducted by Gleaves Whitney.
in Greaves. I know you put this all together, and I'm very grateful to you for doing it. You've set the bar very high on the requirements for this award, and in years to come, I think great people will be at this podium accepting the award. And the bar has been set high, and it will remain high, I hope, at all times. But I thank you, and I thank all for you being present here today. Thank you. Well, following something like that, I'm going to be brief. <laughs> I want to thank you for witnessing a little bit of history today. I want to thank Tom Haas, again, your idea to bring this about. I appreciate that so much as director of the Hallenstein Center for Presidential Studies in Ralph's name. Steve Ford, thank you so much for representing the family and coming to, to uh, help us honor a great man today and your dad. I also want to thank all of you who've come here to, to be with us today. Ralph, thanks so much. Happy birthday to you coming up here in five days. Um, you've witnessed a little bit of history today. There are a lot of lessons that come out of the, the lives of these two men. We hope that you will continue to study them assiduously. Thank you for joining us today, and we wish you Godspeed. <laughs>